Hello, beautiful humans. Welcome. Today, I'm not even sure what, I think day nine of the Power of Love Summit, transforming self and society through love and compassion. It's a very special Tuesday, right? 2-22-22 on a Tuesday. How fun. So excited to be here. My name is Brittany Tackett. I am a transpersonal coach and therapist, yoga and meditation teacher, and founder of Heart First Education, whose mission is to educate the whole person heart first. And I started this summit um, for the same reason that I started Heart First Education, just to have these conversations about the heart and to you know, start talking about it and to help to anchor us into our hearts, right? Um, it's something that's been a practice for me and I'm still learning and I love connecting with other people who are on the journey too and sharing these conversations. So I'm so excited uh, to be here today. I have uh, Teresa Principe with me and she is an intuitive and an earth star guide and she helps to ignite and inspire people uh, to get back into their hearts, um, which is such a special thing. Uh, so I'm so happy to have you with us, uh, Teresa. Could you please tell us a little bit more about you and the work that you're doing? Yes, thank you, Brittany. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you for having me here. Hello to all the wonderful beings joining us today. Just inviting you to take a breath and just breathe into your body and just come aware of this moment. Whether you're driving or seated or moving around in your life, just take a breath and maybe connect your hand to your heart and tune into your heart. So um, as Brittany said, my name is Teresa Principe. And I um, have been on this intuitive heart journey for obviously, you know, we're on our heart journey for a lifetime, right? And those insights come in, especially as we're children, especially as we're, we're moving and exploring the world through play. And through that, I've kind of felt that I've almost like gone backwards in time to go back to that place of remembering that, that innocence and that purity of just playing again and remembering how important it is to stay in the body, to listen in to the guidance, the inner guidance that's always there for us, that's always inspiring us and showing us the way. And, you know, as we grow up, I know for me and my story, you know, not getting into all of it here, um, you know, I'm writing a book on this um, story because it, each, each step on the journey, even the shadows and the wounds have brought me um, to the growth and to who I am today and to, to the medicine that I share and offer to others to support them in finding their way home. Um, so I um, left, um, you know, I started on this journey probably doing therapy right in like 2002 just really realizing some things from childhood, working through some um, trauma that I realized and woke up to that was happening a few different stages in my life, right? So I, I realized that I needed to go on to this, this inner seeking journey of talking to a professional and, and getting insight and wisdom and feedback. Um, and from there, I started to explore movement and yoga. And um, and I, I came from a very religious background and yoga was actually something that um, wasn't really supported by my family because they kind of thought it was demonic and, and sinful. And, um, and it was the first time that I was feeling my body again and feeling alive and being curious. And, and I could feel that little girl coming out to play. Um, and then I you know, I was working out all the time, going to the gym. I loved all those quick, you know, hit classes and Pilates classes and all kinds of intense workouts. Um, and I always was a dancer, right? I think we're, as my yoga teacher says, we're always, we're all dancers inside the womb, you know? Um, so I find that movement is what really gets me into my body and tunes me into my senses. Um, so the journey kind of, you know, started, through the yoga and then I, I was in corporate and I was working in, you know, advertising and media and radio and 
started my own community affairs show to support, you know, the programming and started seeing this greater picture for revitalizing a city that could use some more arts and um, attention, right? And then I started to explore the Native American culture and shamanism in sweat lodges. And I started going to sweats um, for an, a long number of years until recent because of the um, recent situations going on right in our world that it was a little more challenging to do so. Um, but I started coming back to the earth and I started coming back to my body. And I started to realize there's so much more to this life than just kind of living in a box and going through the motion of nine to five. Um, and that, that began this journey of, of seeking and growing and nonstop, you know, finding different practitioners and non-therapists and chiropractic work and network spinal analysis work that went beyond the chiropractic world and um, got into learning about um, somatics and, and touch therapy to work with the trauma. Um, and then I just started to get into um, yoga training and working with different coaches and um, facilitators to get different types of trainings. Um, and that kind of started me out on this journey. And now I've just kind of evolved into this, this work as my purpose work, right? So I'm serving others by offering this guidance um, and being able to share with them all these different tools, practices, and techniques that I've been gathering and collecting through time um, so that I kind of have this, this, this plethora of options to choose from when I start to get into that overthinking, you know, trauma mind that can sometimes hack us from the present moment. So that was my long answer to your question, Brittany. Yeah. So that, that made some sense. I love it. it. It made complete sense. And I really resonated with a lot of what you said. It paralleled my own journey, um, especially like when it comes to finding yoga. And that was what brought me back to my body for the first time. And I also had family in my life who didn't understand it and saw it as something demonic and outside of their religion. Um, so I really resonate with that and went through that myself. And and now, you know, I'm a yoga teacher too. So it was, and at first I was resistant to yoga. I wasn't sure about it. I didn't, I didn't want to take a fitness class. Like we had to take something for college. And I was so in my head and like this intellectual, like you have to take a yoga or you have to take a fitness class. So my mm -hmm. friend's like, well, let's try yoga. And I'm like, okay. And then it, you know, like, I'm like, wow, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it really changed my life. And it was kind of what started me on this journey. And, and so I definitely understand and relate to having family that maybe doesn't get it. And I know a lot of people do, a lot of people relate to that. So I'm so glad you shared that story and shared all the other avenues for healing that you found too. It's such a beautiful path to be on. And I love just hearing about it and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? How just, I feel like there's, you know, there's one in the family, you know, you've heard that where we're kind of like that, that light leader, that one that, that maybe some might call the black sheep, right? And it's like, but you know, whatever does that mean anyways, you know, and it's like, yeah, what's so, what's so, um, it's, it's such, you know, it was almost like such a bright light that for a long time, it, I actually, like what I learned, which was really powerful, um, one of my coaches shared with me was just like, I had to dim my light to, st and stay small, to not hurt or harm, um, or, or show others their pain right, in the family. And then as we grow and expand in this light, then boundaries have to be placed, right? So that we can continue to expand in our light and send love to them, but also hold that space of, I'm gonna continue to rise in my light and you can be where you are and I can be where I am. You know, it's like that where you end and where I begin. And, 
and, and really being able to feel empowered enough to step into that, that, that itself, right, was its own courageous journey. And it's still unfolding, right? So even for me to mention trauma and abuse and religious programming, I couldn't do that for, you know, the first, you know, five years of just starting to talk about my work, right? And, and even the past two years start to really become vocal in it. And it only happens because I've been doing this inner work around it. I'm continuously working with different practitioners, you know, with, with, trauma-informed polyvagal exercises, right, with tapping, emotional freedom technique, you know, with continuous, the yoga is the one that for me, and I'm sure for you too, Brittany, is like, it wakes you up, you know, you start like, you just start feeling connected and you feel, you know, whatever you want to call it, spirit, source, God, this higher connection starts to just pulsate in your body and you're like, this can't be wrong. This can't be, this can't be evil. Yeah. Like that's no, that's the opposite, right? It's like, this is the way, this is the journey, right? And there are many journeys for different people. There's never going to be one way. There's never going to be like, I'm this path that I have is for everyone. No, like, mm -hmm. no, <laughs> you know, it's like saying this brand of clothing, this brand of jeans is for everyone. It's like, no, it's, you know, we, we, we have to have a, a, a full spectrum of color and experience and contrast to, to go in with our senses and learn from people and grow. And the moment we feel closed, shut down, angry, tight, that's, that's an opportunity for growth. Yeah. Right. Like we know this, you know, absolutely. Yeah, and when we feel that resistance or that like opposition to something, like you said, that's an opportunity to grow and to look at that and to go from there. But absolutely, there are so many um, paths and not every path is going to be for everybody. Um, but for me, yoga was truly life-changing and still is, you know, that's why it's a practice and, and then to share it with others. Um, you know, it's a whole different thing. So just love it. Yes. And even bringing it in right to the children and mm -hmm. teaching them all these different practices. You know, I've been just listening to all the other talks and just, you know, especially that one around education and, and bringing in a different way with the meditation, imagine tapping and breathing techniques, imagine movement you know, these, my, my daughter, um, she's 12, she's in a, a Waldorf school. And the thing that most attracted me to that was the, the focus around play and the focus around nurturing whole body self um, and connecting in with whole body self and, and being aware of it so that she can have a strong sense of who she is just, just from her own education, just from the learning through the arts and through being outside, you know? And, and, and it was such a blessing that I wished I had gone through, right? But we can still do that. Even if we're older, we can still go back out to the woods and go out into nature. We can still, you know, take up, you know, hiking and camping or, you know, getting outside, obviously being prepared, obviously, you know, knowing, knowing the rules of the trail, like leaving no trace, right? Respect nature and its environment, right? It's like, but there's something to be said about connecting out in nature. And that's, you know, something that this school was teaching, you know, but I even just have found in my life. And even now, every day I have to get out, you know, at minimum 15 minutes. And that's minimum is like negative 15 degree weather right and it's a snowstorm right but otherwise that's syncopating with the connection of the earth there's there's another language that's happening and once you get into that rhythm your whole nervous system can calm down yeah and then presence returns and in that presence that's where the insight is it's not up here thinking it and solving it and coming up with 10 different solutions, right? And if, you know, I, 
I've been in this inner healing world for a long time and the talk therapy can only go so far, right? Especially if you have trauma or religious programming because you're conditioned in the mind in a certain way that more thinking just makes it worse. Yes. <laughs> you know? Just the loop just keeps on going. Yeah. yeah. So there's other ways. Yeah. Could you speak more to that, to what those other ways are and how we move from up here to down here? Yeah. I mean, as you know, right, yoga has, mm -hmm. and, and yoga is, 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 you know, just movement. It's something different. It's doing something different. The act of exploring something different, right? So it isn't always body movement. It isn't always hustling through 10 different flows in a way and in, in a row and just saying, okay, I've, I've done it. I'm here. Right. It's like, that's actually creating more urgency and feeding overstimulated as we call in the yoga world, Vata mind. Right. So we're in what we call Vata season, right? So Vata season is like mental overload. So if we're in this season of mental overload, now we need to bring the mind down right? So what does that look like? Well, as many have mentioned, as we know, we can write it out. We can talk it out. We can record to ourselves. We can record to a friend. We can record to our coach or mentor, right? We can do it in group, right? And we can share. We can paint it out. So I, I picked up painting and I, it's, it's, I don't have formal training, but, you know, I can pick up things on YouTube. It's what I really found. So what I've seen with many, right, is there's many tools, right? Mm -hmm. But really what it comes down to is what makes you light up? What brings you joy? And you might be like, I don't know. I've been like living this other world from other people for so long. I have no idea. And I've had clients like that right and it's like okay well what do you like I like animals I have you know I have two dogs okay so do you like walking the dog yes okay so go outside and play with the dog make that part of your routine you know make it a, a, a time that you connect in with the dog or the cat right it's like connect in with your animals right it's whatever whatever you are doing in your life that that you kind of, it's almost like what you love to do that maybe you, you look forward to doing when work is done. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about checking out and watching shows and there's nothing wrong with watching a show every now and then, right? But if we're doing it all the time to, to, to numb out, then we're actually only feeding the mind more to cause more overthinking and more stress and more worry and more anxiety because now we're being imbued with outside information on top of our own information that we're already flooded with. Ah, right. it can, we can even just like, even now, like, let's just, just like stroke your head and down your cheek and then just like touch your cheekbones right below your eye and just feel how each fingertip is placed on the face and then relax the shoulders. And now notice your belly. Notice the jaw and the tongue. Now even go to the ears. How much we hear every day is information. Right, so as we just hold our ears and just connect in, you know, you can be rubbing the ears and just loving them. And this, you could be on five calls a day and take a stop in between your Zoom calls and just brush your face, your neck, hold your chest or your heart, feel your heartbeat syncopate. You could be setting alarms every hour and just say minute breath, right, as your reminder, or Three minutes, stand up, walk around, start setting alarms 
for micro, I tell my, my clients that are like back to back corporate Zoom calls, micro movements, mm -hmm. micro minutes, micro movements. So get up and get your exercise ball out and roll around on it. Get your yoga mat out, put it right next to your bed. There was a time, you know, when I was in between work, got left, left one stressful job and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And I didn't want to get up and do anything, you know, and, and then the shame around collecting unemployment and giving yourself permission to go out and do stuff when you have unemployment. For so long, it was like, how dare you show your face in public in the daytime if you're collecting unemployment? That's, that was my trauma, right? So put the yoga mat down next to your bed and get up and just do one or two poses, right? In between and make that a practice. And if, and if you're in between work, instead of hyper vigilantly looking online for things that aren't serving you, but you feel like you have to do because you have to get work because you feel guilty collecting. No, no. The permission is given to go play. The more you play, the more you explore, the more you know about yourself, the faster you will find what your soul aligned purpose work or your next job is, the next opportunity. You could be walking your dog in the park instead of saying, oh, I'm supposed to be on here for five hours a day, draining my eyes and my energy, looking for jobs that I don't even like. And you go to the park one day with your dog and you're walking and you meet somebody else with a dog and they happen to be looking for a personal assistant who needs help with the thing, the very thing you love to learn, you'd love to learn more about, right? It's like when we follow our intuition in the next step, the next step is shown. Yeah. We're not allowed to plan ahead. We cannot see ahead. We cannot know ahead. You know, anybody who predicts the future, no, they do not know. I am sorry. There's too much free will at play. If you, if you believe it enough and you stay with it enough, sure, it, it could manifest and show itself, right? But you get to choose your life. So choose wisely by coming here first. Every day come here first. Not outside first to everyone else. Yes, children... They can run in before you even wake up, right? But they're, they can be your heart connection. Look at them in the eyes. Look at their juicy little cheeks. They're going to grow up very fast. And then they don't even want to spend time with you. You know, like mine will be like, I'm going to read, you know, for three hours in a row, which is amazing. But, you know, I miss her, right? So cherish those, those moments. And even just your hands like this, just connect your hands back. And as soon as you go up to there spinning, pull it back down. Look at your fingers. You can, you know, pat your arms. This is a little bit of like that, you know, pat your chest. You need some bravery, you know. You feel nervous, do a little tapping. A little tapping, there's tapping points, pressure points, acupressure points that are connected to organs in the body. There was a doctor that found that there are organs in the body connected to certain um, pressure points, acupressure points in our, in our, on our body. And so he used to, you know, direct people to go, okay, your stomach's bothering you. Okay. Just tap the chin. And then he realized, wait, why don't I just get them all? And we just tap all of the spots and get all the places that might hold tension and release it and work with the subconscious to bring you back conscious. And that's what tapping does. So you could be talking and tapping, right? And it looks weird. It might be weird, right? But I'm telling you, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just waking up just doing this. Yeah. yeah. You, can you notice the difference in your body? Mm -hmm. like notice how you're like you could almost it's almost like your clouded mind like mine feels a little cloudy it feels really thick up here right when you start tapping you can feel it's almost like the clouds move and you can do a double or you can do a single you know two finger or 
depends. Sometimes if it's really stressful, you're like, I need all fingers on deck, right? <laughs> like, this is great. I'm a little crazed right now, right? So it's like side of the eye, you know, below the eye, above the lip, the chin, and that, that heart, that chest. You're just like, hey, I'm here. I hear you. And then emotion's going to arise. Yes, I feel sadness. I feel joy. I feel anger. Tap it out, right? And you can shake it out. You can, one of my favorite things is the shake out. Do you know the shake out? I don't know if I know the same shake out, but just shaking it out. Yeah, just shaking yeah. it out. You know, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's tons of, you know, people, you know, change things and move things to create new tools and make names for things, right? But it's like, what really it's all about is like, what works for you? And how are you going to stay there? You don't do robotic, you know, things all the time if it's not bringing you there. So that's why the more tools you get, the more you can be like, ooh, which one, which, like, which paint color do I want to paint with today? Yeah. You know? So it's like affirmations, meditations, you know, writing, journaling, you know, then, then it could be yoga, it could be shaking it out, it could be dancing it out. You know, it could be getting on your bike, it could be doing a hit class, it could be doing some weights, you know, it could be making like we were talking with like a really delicious tea or drink mm -hmm. that warms your body. It could be sitting in silence, listening to a song and then just going into it, like listening for the violin, right? Listening for the keys like the beep, right? It's like, you know, that, that beep, you're just like, which, which detector is that beep coming from? But you're never going to, it's like, you won't ever find it because it's like a trick, you know, it's like, we're going to be here this day. And then we're going to be over here this day. And you're like, all right, spirit, I hear you. I'm here. So you leave it as an awakening exercise, right? <laughs> yes. I love that. There was a book I read called The Island by Aldous Huxley. And it's like these people are on an island and there's this bird that flies around and it says, attention, attention. And so every time it says that, it's like this cue, kind of like how you mentioned with the alarms of like, oh, this is my mindful moment. Yeah. So it's like that little beep, which my smoke detector is known to do, right? Like every little beep, like, oh, okay, I can, I can come too. I can be a little bit more present now. I can take this as an opportunity. And I love what you said, how you gave all those different examples of different things you can do, because it really can be anything. It's really just the intention that you bring to it and your presence. You know, you can bring that deep pre presence and that awareness to anything, and it's going to enhance whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I, and I, you know, as you, you say that, I think the thing that continues to arise is this importance around really being honest and authentic with ourselves at a deeper level. Right. So mm -hmm. we can be, we can be invoking these practices and we can be, you know, I'm going to just share something if I may, Brittany, yeah. if you're okay with just like, there was a point in my life that I was in a toxic relationship and I was doing my yoga and I was doing my trainings and I was meditating and I was listening to the music and chanting, you know, it's like Diva Prima was like prime, right? It's like, I'm in it and I'm feeling high and I'm feeling joyful. And then I would go home and slowly over time, you know, it just got worse and I would be so high and then get dropped down so low and thought because of my religious upbringing, I've got to make this work. I got to do more work around it. We got to do therapy. We got to figure this out. You know, oh, I can get through this. I, I have the strength, right? But there comes a point where this authenticity comes in to say, this isn't mine. Mm -hmm. I'm doing what I need to do. I, I, I have two therapists and a group therapy and I'm, and I'm on this purpose driven path. 
You know, now it's time to create a plan to go. And it might feel scary. And it might feel alone, but you're not. And the more you're seeing in it, the safer you are, you know? And so my point of that is, is like, we can do all the practices in the book, but if we're not truly embodying what we really believe and, and living it in all areas of our lives and loving ourselves through it and not getting higher, if you're, if you're not getting higher and higher and higher, you have to keep dropping down so low, that's something to question. When you're doing the inner work, you keep going higher. There's going to be moments where you go into the shadow, work through it, and then you come back out again and up, right? You're, you're in this, is my coach to use this, so I'm not even going to take this because this was hers, this infinity loop of like, you go back into the inner child wound in the darkness, and that person coming in to bring you that wound is there to show you. But if that wound is, is deep, the not enoughness might be keeping you in that wound with that person showing you, but it doesn't mean you keep staying with that person to grow with them, with that wound if it's toxic, right? It's like, no, actually you rise up and you step into your courage and you free yourself from that wound that wanted to keep you small and quiet because that's no longer working, mm -hmm. right? And so that's where like this continuous journey has to happen. We can't just like piecemeal a little bit here and there. It's like, you know? There's a higher joyful place where you can be more free if you just keep following your heart. Yeah. And you can't know what is ahead. You can't plan ahead. Mm. You know, people have tons of goals in life. I want to get married. I want to have kids. I want to have a, you know, six figure job. And then they get all that and they go, oh, now what? I feel empty. So if you start at empty and you fill yourself up with everything that is inside of you, right? So you use the tools on the outside to build up your inside foundation. Your gold remains no matter what. Yeah. And that, that's priceless. So then no matter what's happening on the outside, you'll always be okay. And that's, that's, I'm sharing this from my own journey. Like, that's what I've learned. I can be out of a job. I can be not knowing where I'm living. I can have no money. I can have debt. I can have, be unemployed. I can, I can not know what's happening, right? But if I have this anchor within of strength and courage and love, and I have all these tools that I'm working with, I'm actually really okay and safe. And then they can all, all the support can come in a lot easier than pushing and forcing. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I hope I'm making some sort of sense, but I'm just kidding. I get a lot of like drop-ins and I just go. Yeah. You know? I think it's making complete sense. And, and I love that you brought it up because I know it's something that, you know, so many of us can relate to and, and one way or another, you know, and it could be any relationship with any person or a job or anything that you are doing in your life or allowing in your life, that's still not really in alignment, right? So you can be doing all the things, like you said, and if there's still this area where it's not fully authentic or fully in alignment, you know, you may need to, to have the courage to let go of it, to really see what's on the other side. And yeah. that way to go is not easy, especially with relationships. Cause you know, we love that person, even if it's toxic or even whatever it is, whatever difficulty or challenge, there was obviously love there at one point. And yeah, it's just so hard when you don't see the other side, you don't know what's coming and and those boundaries you mentioned too, of, of setting those boundaries between you and, and those other people. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's interesting. And, you know, the thing to preface to is to really know one, don't beat yourself up. Right. It's like, if soon as you hear yourself, like, oh, I suck, I'm still in this thing, whatever it is, that's now you're off. No, like that's not stop. Right. It's like, 
that's the red light. And, and the next one is you can't get it wrong and you can't mess it up and it's all okay, whatever you choose and decide, right? Like if you need the, the job that you don't like because it pays the bills, because that's what you need right now. Okay, great. And how are you creating an anchor and a support around that so that you feel full and nourished and true to yourself outside of that? And how do you set boundaries in it, right? So like if you're in 10 Zoom meetings a day, but you have to keep this job and you're not getting up to go take a break, to use the bathroom and to drink water, that's where you get to set a boundary. Those are okay boundaries, right? So like you can play with this inside of whatever this thing is and it could change because when you change, everything can change around you. So you may be the catalyst for the environment or the corporation to change by changing within yourself, right? So you can keep your six figure if you want it and, and you don't like it right now, but do your inner work and you'll watch everything change magically. So you don't have to leap. You know, I, I did the leap. I left the corporate ship and I was like, oh, I'm going to go do my immersion and come back and be teaching full time and be great. No, it didn't work out that way, but it's okay. I learned, right? And so feeling supported in your transition through your journey is also really great, right? Like to feel safe and have scaffolding is what it's about, yeah. you know, to, to find your way and feel safe is the journey. That's what you want. You want to feel safe, right? So there is no wrong way. There is no like this person's better or they're doing that. And remember that on the outside, when you see somebody, everyone's going through something somewhere, right? There's no, we're all human. That's what being human is. There's no one living like this blissed out, perfect, whatever you think it is. No, everyone's got something somewhere, you know, that's, that's what we're doing. <laughs> What would you say to someone, Teresa, who is like on that loop that you mentioned, and it's like working so hard, doing all the things, um, has all the tools, but keeps falling back in to the shadows, the wounds, keeps coming back to those things and feels like maybe impatient, like, oh, I should, I should be here by now. And like getting to that kind of red light that you mentioned what would you say in that case? Cause I know I've been there and I've had to go there with myself of like, Oh, I, sh I thought I was over this by now. And here it is again. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm curious what you would say in those kind of situations. Yeah. Um, great question. So what I'm hearing from the question is when you're, you've got the tools, when you feel the inner wound come back in and you thought it should be gone by now and it's coming back in in another form and you're using it and then you're moving in and out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So what I learned, well, there's, a, there's a few things, right? So like, <clears throat> it depends, I guess it depends on each situation, right? So say the pulse, right? Because some of it is timeline. Some of it is we're carrying other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. So that can be done through quantum healing, right? Where you're doing some timeline repair work. Some of it might be like shamanic, you know, journey where you've got to go to a sh shaman and, and do some soul retrieval work right? Depending on where you are at, right? And, and some of it may be, you know, working with emotional freedom technique to release some subconscious, you know, like that if you're an avoid, like if you know the attachment styles, if you're an avoid and you're, or you're attached and you know this about yourself, can, you can still live with it and work towards becoming secure for sure. But if you're not looking at where the avoidance is repeating, like, you know, like when someone's trying to reach out to you and you're continuously ignoring the message for weeks and weeks, that's probably avoidant, right? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, one is like, number one is love yourself, right? Like love yourself. Just can you love that this is here again? <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, can you just be like, oh, here I am again? Yep. I mean, that's one thing that I've definitely like learned over time is this like, oh, I can't keep pushing it away and being like, fix, go away, little wounded girl who I feel so awkward with, you know? <laughs> now it's like, like, now it's like, just bring like this again was, you know, one of my practitioners that I was working with, bring out the little girl. If you remember that age where it felt awkward that you remember this, the same thing that's rising now, you know, if you can start to place the age with the, the thing that's repeating, like 
that here's that feeling again. When did that first begin? How old were you? Right. And then there's, you know, we could do like, for me, it's like, we could do guided meditations where you go back into that age and heal that space. Right. And that's like, kind of like some of the timeline repair, right. But in a different way. And then there's bring her, bring that image out and, and look at them and, and start loving them again and seeing them for who they are in their wounded self. And once, you know, I feel like once we start to know our like our wound, then we know, oh, here it is again. Nope, I'm doing that negative self-talk again about the fact that there I am with that time, like me and time, I live in time. It's really hard for me to get placed on. I've definitely improved, right? But it's something that I continuously work on. And I can drop my energy really low if I go sink into it. And then, so what I have to do is go, wait, stop, like, I can express myself and then love myself with it and note, what can I note for next time? And just make a micro movement towards maybe, you know, getting there a little bit earlier, doing one less thing, but that your intuition knows, like it tell your intuition tells you, you got to go now. And your thoughts are like, well, maybe I ought to pack that. Maybe I ought to bring that over here. Maybe I ought to, you know, and that's like overthinking mind. Yeah. Right. But intuition is like, it's time to go, you know, and that's like, that's like the, the mother and like the, the queen, like taking care of you, you know, but the little girl's like, I'm, I'm panicking. Do I have everything I need? You know? So as soon as you see her, you can go, come on, little girl. We're okay. We're going, Oh, yep. We're late today. Yep, we're totally irresponsible. We are irresponsible, you know, sinful little girls, you know, like, it's just like, just call it what it is. And then before you know, you laugh, like, come up with, you know, make it humorous, you know, and I, and I tap when it's really intense, because you work with your subconscious, you know, so the, the, those two of the things that we carry with us there, you're going to grow and expand, but you're also going to go deeper into the wound, the more work you do, but then the higher you come out of it, the, the, the more expansive your joy and your bliss is too. Right. So like you go in deep, you feel the feels, you cry, you're in the zone, you know, you're off because it doesn't feel good. Whenever it feels not good, <clears throat> you're off of connection to God, source light, you're off. Anytime there's something that goes with an emotion or anything off, right? So as soon as you know you're off, that's where the love is. That's where the practices come in. And then you just come back. And it might be just praying to bring, bring me back. Show me my light again. Show me who I am again in my wholeness my fullness, beyond all the coverings, beyond all the masks. Show me and remind me who I am now. You know, you almost like invoke it, call it in. You take your power back. Right? I love that. It's like a surrender to just coming to that prayer and just, just show me who I am again. I'm here. I and I, you know, I just surrender, surrender to this. And yeah. yeah, I mean, it might be falling down on your knees and crying about it, but it's also awakening to it. And the more you awaken and see it for the love that's behind it all, then you clear it and then you rise up again and then you come in stronger. And then your medicine is more potent to share with others just by being not doing. That's what I had to learn. I was overdoing. I'm still, I still, it's a, you know, this dance. Can I just be, and that will be enough? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to close with a, like a little, medicine my medicine bowl and a quick little meditation to put people to sleep 
Yes, I would love that. <laughs> I like, you know, I, I love working with babies and like, I just like watching them go to sleep, you know, and you just like sing to them. They're just so pure and so joyful and so loving and full of love. And that's who we are, yeah. you know, before everything was there. So, you know, if there's listeners that are home and they're grounding in and they want to lay down, you can do that. Obviously, don't do it while you're driving, you know, pay attention to the road, no closing the eyes there. You know, you can always come back to replay, but just feel your, so let's go into that, that earth star. Let's go into the earth chakra. So the earth chakra is feel your root chakra first. So the root chakra is at the base of the spine. Your root is your foundation, your family, your provisions, your support. Below that, in the earth, imagine going through the foundation, through the floors. Maybe you're in a building, you've got to go down 10 floors. Keep going down into the foundation See if you can see the soil. And if cynicism is coming up, just see yourself outside on the earth and you're sitting on the soil. Now go a foot and a half below the earth's surface there. Straight line from your base of your spine. That's your, your earth star. See it as a light pouring up from the earth's core up into your body shooting up this bright healing light imbue whatever color comes to mind maybe you need anchoring in with red maybe you need calming with the nervous system with indigo blue or violet maybe you want to come right into that beautiful heart of yours feel that green color pick your green whatever green inspires and ignites and invites in an open heart. Soften through your shoulders. Soften through your belly. Maybe touch your belly or your heart or your chest. Relax. Relax. You're okay in this moment. You are okay. You are safe. You are whole, you are enough. Hear it in your heart. Say it in your mind, I am. And then fill in the blank. I am love, I am peace, I am whole. I am complete. I am doing the work. I'm showing up. I am here right now. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feels okay to start holding the breath for a few seconds on the top of the inhalation. Feel free to start to bring that into your in breath. In your out breath, you can do the same, pausing for a couple seconds on the end, letting it all out, release the worries, the fears, the anxiety, shame, blame, doubt, yucky, yucky, get it out. Breathe in love, joy, light, purity, truth, honor, sovereignty, and grace. Nothing more you need to do. Nothing more you need to be. Just here, breathing. Master the mind by breathing in the body. 
Feel the breath rise. Feel your heart expand open. The rib cage, the lungs, expansive and full and healthy. It is so, and so it is. Full body health can return, is returning in this moment now with this breath. Invited in, whole. Feeling whole and all present, all accounted for here. From fertilization to last breath, all here, all present. Enough as you are. mind rest just for now. You can engage in an after if you so choose. The body relax and be still and at ease. Give this gift to yourself. Rest tonight under the deep, dark blue sky, stars all around, you sparkling in that dark blue sky, part of the whole, part of the collective. to dream, dream of your heart's desires, dream of your heart's content, dream the dreams you've always wanted as a little one, dancing and singing, swirling and moving, being and breathing, free as you are. Now is the time. Get excited. Feel the ecstatic bliss of your pure essential self ready to shine. Bright like the stars in the sky, you are your own unique star. Carry this with you wherever you go. Remembering to love yourself all along the way. And just repeating that, saying it within, looking in a mirror as if your life depended on it. Gaze in that left eye. Tell yourself you love yourself, even if I don't fully believe it yet. I intend to fully love myself. It's not a sin. It's not wrong. It's not selfish. In fact, it's a necessity for this time. Bringing your hands together in whatever way serves you, connected, palms together at the heart, at the belly. Maybe you're embracing yourself. And that bell, the bell was there to close our practice. 
Thanking all of our support from here and beyond, bringing us guidance and wisdom, insight as we continue on our journey, wherever we may go, we may be surrounded in the highest and brightest light to carry us on our journey, surround us with this love. We are so grateful, we are so blessed, we are so thankful. Sending you all so much love. Brittany, such a gift, such a blessing. You're doing amazing work in the world. Continue doing this. You have poignantly awareness to ask these just direct questions that are just right on. And your, your listening is such a gift. So thank you for doing the summit and bringing this together despite everything going on in your life and that courage and bravery you had to deal with through it. So beautiful. I'm so grateful to have met you. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. I'm so grateful to have you here. This has been beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. And thank you to our viewers. Uh, from my heart to yours, I'm so glad you're here. Yes. Namaste, everyone. Have a beautiful evening. Namaste.